If you clicked on this video, I'm sure you enjoy playing the harp or performing in some way and want to make a living off your passion from it. It can be hard knowing what you want to do, but not being sure how to profit from it. As a musician, this is more often the case than not, and people in our lives may even try to tell us to have a backup plan or outright try to convince us not to pursue music at all. Luckily for you, I'm here to tell you the exact opposite and how you can make consistent income as a harpist from multiple sources. Before I get started, I want you to start thinking of your harp skills as a business. By that I mean valuing yourself by not settling for low prices, negotiating, and starting to think of marketing in some way or another, even if it's just word of mouth to start. When I started out, I used to jump at any and every opportunity to perform, but I didn't consider if the money or pay was worth my time, and in most cases, I didn't even think I could make the amount of money I wanted to playing harp. Therefore, it's important to have a business mindset and be confident in yourself, and it'll allow you to utilize these tips to their fullest extent. I'm going to order these gigs in terms of easiest to hardest to both implement and profit from. Stick around to the end for bonus tips and ideas. My first gig and the easiest way you're gonna make money as a harpist is going to be performing at public places like coffee shops, restaurants, hotels, and other places like that that are easily accessible. This is gonna be your bread and butter because when you make a good connection with the owner or whoever's working there, he'll wanna have you there every week and you can always rely on it anytime you need to perform somewhere. The main two ways you'll be paid are by tips and or by the owner. And if you're a musician, then you know that tips don't usually pay the most so you're gonna have to use your negotiating skills in order to get paid by the owner. But I have some ways that have worked for me, so I'll tell you what helps in order to get paid by the owner more often. Some ways that have worked for me are to tell the owner that you can bring a certain amount of people, invite your friends, family members, coworkers, people you meet on the street. People love the harp. I like to think of the harp as an asset and an advantage because we're a luxurious instrument. Our instrument looks good, it's expensive. So we can have higher prices than most musicians. Don't be afraid to put yourself out there and tell people you meet that seem nice on the streets. I know it might seem scary and intimidating at first, but like I said before, we're a business as harpists and the more people we talk to, the more people that know we play the harp, the more business we're going to get. The second way to make money as a harpist is through orchestral gigs. This can be a full-time job, which is more competitive, or occasionally there's orchestras that hire a harpist if they don't have a harpist or if their main harpist gets sick. If you have a harp teacher or professor, ask them if they can help you find those orchestral gigs. This will get your foot in the door for those bigger and more stable orchestral gigs I was talking about before. The pay is definitely better than a coffee shop, but the work can be much harder if you have never done this before. So make sure you learn your harp standard pieces. These pieces are Handel's Harp Concerto, Mozart, Pines of Rome, Nutcracker Cadenza. There's a book called Bullen's Harp Principle Book, which I'll link in the description, that has these main harp cadenzas and excerpts that you'll need to know when you're applying for orchestral gigs. You can also find a lot of orchestral pieces online at imslp.com with your part, but it may not have the correct fingerings or a lot of the notes that you might need to help you. Overall, orchestral gigs lead to the possibility of a stable job and hard work will be your main driver for getting these. My third way of making money with the harp is at places like weddings, engagement ceremonies, bar mitzvahs. This is going to be the highest pay for probably the least amount of work, but the hardest part is going to be getting booked. The easiest way to get booked is going on vendor websites like Wire and The Knot. But if you don't want to do that, you can also call or email places that cater or listen to any friends you know are getting married and start with the cheap price. This is what I recommend. Start with a really low price, but get a bunch of people sending you reviews on how good you did. And once you build a name for yourself, your name starts to pop up more and you have more validity when people look you up. And at weddings, a lot of people are thinking about getting married themselves. The bridesmen, the groomswoman. These are people that may or may not be married. And if they see you play and you do really well, they'll be impressed and book you for their wedding and word of mouth spreads. So if you can, try to find any family members, friends, 
whatever. You could do 150, 250, nothing crazy, and try to get your name out there. But if you still have trouble, don't forget that those vendor sites will put your name out there and they can be helpful. I've never used them before, so I can't tell you exactly how well they are, but I've called them and I know they do about like, I think 500, sometimes they have sales for like 350 for the year. So check those out too as a possibility. My fourth and favorite way to make money with the harp is gonna be at theaters, recital halls, performing arts centers. They have a lot of big ones, stages. That's what I wanna do and perform at bigger stages. But my advice for starting small is, you can find the owners, email them, call, talk to the people at these places and see if you can play. There's two main ways you can make money doing this. The first way is going to be splitting the revenue with the venue, which is probably the easiest thing to do if you don't have so much money. Let's say you're keeping 75% of ticket sales, they take 25%. This is if you don't know you could sell the place out or if you're just starting out or if the place just offers this. Next, which is probably the easier way if you have the money for it, is to just completely rent out the space for two hours, depending on what their price is. And I recommend doing this if you think you could fill this place up or tell a bunch of people in your town, start small, and you'll probably make more money than if you're splitting revenue because you're keeping everything. So definitely look into this if you're into performing and you really like performing public. Start small, start local, build your way up, and maybe you'll be a famous harpist and I'll be coming to watch you. These last two are the hardest, but will also pay the most if you persevere and stick through. The first I'm gonna say is recording your harp for Spotify, Apple Music, streaming platforms. These can be covers, your own original music, and just getting people listening to you. If your dream is to have people listening to your harp music, then this is definitely a big one to get started as soon as possible. You're gonna have to get a distributor, which I can talk about more later, but basically what they do is they get your music on streaming platforms. So go on distrokid.com, it's $30 for the year, and whenever you want, you can upload your music and recorded harp onto Spotify, Apple Music, all platforms. The way you're gonna make money with this is obviously having listeners, having a fan base. So if you're doing all the other tips and you're promoting yourself, then this will help a lot. If you're at a coffee shop and you talk about, hey, listen to my album on a microphone, or if you're at a wedding and you're talking about your album, talking about it constantly, whatever you're doing, promote it, promote it, promote it. Remember, we're a business and we promote ourselves and market ourselves. Basically, a lot of the things that artists are doing, if not everything, we're gonna be doing too to promote ourselves. Which leads me to my next and final tip, which is social media like you see me doing right now. YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. There's a lot of older people listening to The Harp, so definitely utilize Facebook too. The Harp is a small community, which I see as a benefit because when you look on YouTube right now, there's not too many how-to videos with the Harp or advice or experiences. So this leaves you room to be one of the first people doing it. Or just when people look it up, you'll start to pop up first. And that's why I think it's important to utilize social media for your Harp while you still can before it gets oversaturated. And as Harpists, we have the power to inspire people when the youth or any age listens to us, they can be inspired to learn how to play. We can expand the community together. And that's why I think social media is important. So definitely put yourself out there, talk about your harp experiences, whatever it is, because there's definitely people who are willing to listen to what you have to say. If you made it this far into the video, then I have some really good bonus tips for you. If you see singers or other musicians playing at a coffee shop, Ask them where they perform because most likely these are the places that are going to pay. My next tip with tips, no pun intended, is to play songs people can relate to. This is popular music. For me, Beatles music helps a lot. If you play songs that people know, they're more likely to tip you. So take that into consideration and don't just play classical music or Play what you enjoy, but keep it in mind and always expand your mind to learning new pieces. That's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you wanna learn things like recording yourself at the harp, or if you have any ideas, leave it down in the comments below and I'll see you next time. Peace.